At the end of 2021, I reviewed one of the most disappointing locos I'd ever experienced. The all new Hornby W1 Hush Hush 10,000 locomotive. It was hideously expensive. At a much higher price, £219.99, it was thrust into a cardboard box without any proper packaging. The loco box was just floating around uncushioned inside there. That is exactly as it came from Hornby. Parts of the model were horribly unrealistic. Yeah, absolutely terrible looking up. They? They're far from touching the track. And it was built with several poor quality components. This one, short as it is, is still warped. All of this could have been forgiven if the loco ran properly, but... I decided that this was not acceptable for £219.95, so I returned it to Hornby for a full refund. And I have received no explanation from Hornby, I've received no apology, and in fact all Hornby have done is increase the price even more, to a now staggering £241.99. But this is not the end of the story. Very fortunately, I've been able to snag a pre-order for another Hush Hush from Derails Models at a much more reasonable price of £197.99, and so to date we are going to try it again. This is the Hornby Hush Hush Redemption. Very unusually, today's locomotive is still in its outer packaging, and that's because I believe, unlike Hornby, Derails Models actually cares about models arriving with customers in one piece, and I'm hoping to prove that to you today by blindly unboxing this on camera and showing you the level of packaging that Derails have used compared with what Hornby used back in December. So you might be wondering why, why have I done this? Why have I spent an incredible amount of money on another Hush Hush after my terrible experience? Well, the fact of the matter is I like the Hush Hush. I love the way the locomotives look and I just want a good Hush Hush that works and that I can run and enjoy. I also want to compare this Hush Hush to the one I got back in December. I want to find out whether there are any persisting issues and I want to find out whether this new Hush Hush is better in any areas as well. More than anything, I'm really hoping that this performs well. If it doesn't, it will be going straight back to derails. Sorry about that, derails. So let's get this out and let's take a look. So let's get started then by taking a look at the packaging job that Derails have done for this £200 locomotive. And I feel like if this is up to their usual standards, then at the very least we're going to be starting out on the right foot, aren't we? Now there might be an invoice inside here which has my address on it, so obviously for reasons of privacy I might have to blur that out or cut it out or something. So yeah, there's no funny business if you see some strange cuts or whatever right so is this just an empty box with the loco rattling around inside clearly not so we've got some brown paper here which is cushioning the loco uh, clearly the loco has also got some bubble wrap on it yeah that's not a hornby feature i don't think i actually think derails fit that to the box then we've got these foam clamps, which stop the loco banging against the side of the packaging. Again, nothing like that from Hornby's warehouse or wherever it came from. And then we've got more paper in the bottom. So truly an incredible packaging job. Just goes to show how much we need retailers and how much better it is to have a model actually packed than just slung into a box and sent out with no regard for the loco's condition, I guess. Right, so let's pull this out then and let's hope that this is a much better hush hush than the one I looked at uh, all the way back in December. 
And I think this is a slightly different loco to the one I looked at in December. I think this is a, it looks like a darker livery, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, not too sure, obviously, I don't have the old model to compare it to. But if I show you the end of the box, you can see the product code, which is different. I think it's R3979. It is the LNER class W1464, and this is a DCC-ready locomotive. So you can chip it with a decoder if you want to. Let me show you the back of the box then. So this is classified as an 8P, yeah, very powerful loco. Brief history for you in the middle of the box. And then you've got Hornby's 2020 diagrams on the far side. I am aware that I've done a video very similar to this, so I'm not gonna go into masses of detail. Really what I'm interested in is the quality of this model, the condition of the model, and also its performance. So those are going to be the focus today. But there we go, we've got the loco inside the pack. Let's pull this out and have a look. I suppose I should say, if you want to check out my original review of the Hush Hush, I'll pop a link up there. Um, but very, very briefly, we've got the Class W1 original and rebuilt instructions, which I certainly have showed to you before. So I'll just open that up and let you have a look if you want to. It is very, very standard stuff though. And on the back, just the usual info about the brake rods. So no need to linger on that, I don't think. Let's have a look at the accessories bag then, just to see what's in it. Because it was a while ago since I looked at one of these. So <laughs> we've got some very wobbly looking brake rigging inside there. It's a good job I'm not planning to fit that, isn't it? And then, of course, we've got two flanged axles, which you can fit in place of the flangeless rear wheels of the Loco to allow it to look a little bit more realistic on static display, although, of course, it won't be able to take curves and such, at least not very tight ones while those are fitted. And we've got some painted steps by the looks of it, some cylinder drain cocks, which are also painted. Not seeing any screw link couplings, though. And again, for such an expensive model, I would certainly expect that sort of feature. Right, let's take a look at the condition then. Please cross your fingers, even though that will do no good at all. All right, so first things first, can't see any cracks in the bodywork. That was quite a common theme with the first release, wasn't it? All these sort of smoke deflectors were damaged in many cases. Uh, but no, this one looks really, really good. Obviously, the finish is decent, I would say. Yeah, there's not too much of a plasticky finish on that body. And it is just such an unusual locomotive. Definitely wanted one of these to keep because the rebuilt Hush Hush that I've got is awesome, but um, it looks a lot like an A4. It doesn't look as unique as it perhaps really is. This one, though, is extremely unique looking with this very strange looking bodywork uh, due to the type of boiler used on these locos. And I'll give you more information on that in just a second. But yeah, it looks, it looks to be in one piece at the very least, doesn't it? We need to take a much closer look at this to verify that the quality is decent this time around. But before we do, let's have a recap on the background and history of the LNER Hush Hush in real life. Officially known as the LNER Class W1, the Hush Hush locomotive got its nickname because as an experimental locomotive, it was kept as a complete secret during its development. A unique locomotive, both in looks and the fact that only one was ever produced, it was also an experiment in high pressure steam. The original boiler being rated for 450 psi, which is significantly higher than most other locomotives. The Gresley A1, for instance, had a boiler pressure of only 180 psi, and it was this boiler that was partially responsible for the W1's very unique looks, as it was constructed in a triangular arrangement in the same style as the Yarrow marine boilers used by shipbuilders. The unique status of the Hush Hush goes even further than the unconventional boiler though. This was based on Gresley's tried and tested Pacific chassis, although an additional set of trailing wheels were added due to the extra length, making the W1 the only standard gauge 464 locomotive ever to run on a British railway at the time. Despite all of this, steaming was relatively poor during first tests and it never really met the standards required. As such, no more examples were ever produced, and the existing W1 was rebuilt at Doncaster Works in 1936 with a more conventional boiler. She was then sadly scrapped in 1959, thus finally eliminating Gresley's famous experiment. So there she is, up close and personal for you, my second attempt at the original condition Hornby Hush Hush. 
And you know what, for a second here, I was really excited about this because the model was all in one piece. I thought, yes, I've got a decent hush hush. But then I remembered, you know, this model is £241.99 now on Hornby.com. And here I am celebrating that nothing has broken off it, that nothing has cracked. There's nothing at all to celebrate about that because that is the bare minimum. Of course this thing should be in one piece. And on closer inspection, to be honest with you, this is still not a quality model in my opinion. At least not to the tune of 200 or even £241.99. The bodywork is still constructed using cheap plastic and as a result the running plate at the front here is still hopelessly warped. I mean it looks absolutely awful doesn't it? And there is no possibility that Hornby are unaware of this issue because I for one have mentioned this time and time again when Hornby have produced plastic running plates that have warped. Not to mention all of the other reviewers and blog posters who have mentioned the same thing. So this is just pure contempt for customers at this point isn't it? At this sort of price the foot plate should be die cast, that is it. The wheels at the back here, these still look absolutely terrible and that kind of makes sense because obviously these look the way they do by design, it's not some sort of quality problem. I think wheels on track is a very basic and reasonable requirement isn't it? And here these are floating ridiculously unrealistically off the track, it's just not a good feature. The assembly isn't great either, we've got marks on the bodywork, I'm not sure if that's glue or just a mark from the packaging. On the tender, this is definitely glue though, yeah, horrible assembly, not sure why they're using this glue that clouds up like it does, but of course they are. And then there's details like this that again are just hopelessly wonky, why that has not been glued on straight and why some sort of quality control hasn't picked that kind of thing up is completely beyond me. And then you've got the Loco itself, which isn't that high spec, quite frankly. We do have pre-fitted lamps on the Loco, but they don't light up. They're just bits of plastic. Again, why? Why does this incredibly expensive model not have any lights? I think the same is true inside the cab as well. Yep, no firebox LEDs or anything. And the same is true of the front coupling hook. Again, why have we not got any screw link couplings to fit to these hooks? Why are details like that just missing willy nilly? Yeah, I don't get it. The fact of the matter is that this is not a 200 or far from it, a £241.99 model. I get it, I understand Hornby are in trouble financially and they need to make some money, but this is not how to do it because this is really just damaging their reputation even further and ripping customers off with poor quality, poor detailed models is not a long-term solution to saving a company. I can't believe that this is not obvious. However, the model does do quite a few things nicely. The finish on the bodywork is absolutely fine, relatively glossy, I would say, and even though the banding is quite basic, there's nothing complex about it, it has at least been done well. And I think the same is true for most of the decoration too really, the running number on the side of the loco and the LNER lettering on the tender all look absolutely fine, nothing wrong with that. A lot of the separately fitted metal work is just plastic unfortunately, but at least it has been painted relatively well and all of the colours match, so that's again okay. The handrails do appear to be metal on the side of the smoke deflectors for want of a better term uh, but they don't have a great finish to them, quite plasticky and uh, again these ones on the front, they're not that sturdy to be honest with you, I, I think metal parts here would have been better quality. I do like the front of the smoke box though, it's a very unusual look isn't it that. Uh, we've got sprung buffers so that's a nice feature. I think the wheels look good as well, yeah we've got nicely painted wheels with disguised axles and the coupling and connecting rods look absolutely fine, yeah no problem at all with that. Despite not having any lights, the cab area is quite impressive, the glazing on the front looks good, we do have opening air intakes on the roof which you can move about uh, with a bit of difficulty if you want to, and yeah sure the interior cab detail is very good, if the rest of the model was up to that sort of standard then I think this model would be more worthy of the price tag. Quick look at the tender, again I've reviewed this tender before so I'm not going to go into too much detail, I'm just going to give you a few shots of the model here and there. Coal load looks good for instance and you've got this railing across the top which again looks absolutely fine. Plenty of detail around the back as well including this porthole, same slightly 
dodgy moulding on that window there. But uh, yeah, I guess it is what it is. Pity about all the glue marks though, that does really pull down the quality for me. So yeah, I mean, it's a cool looking model, isn't it? But the fact is the level of detail and the quality are just not that great. This is a 150 pound model, in my opinion. When you compare it to what Backman produce for 200 quid, and Backman are pretty darn expensive, when you compare it to what Dapple have produced for much less than 200 quid, the price here just does not match the model and there's no getting away from that, in my opinion. So the story is pretty much the same here as it was with the first Hush Hush I tried. So the title of this video, Hush Hush Redemption, probably doesn't make a lot of sense right now. But if the Loco does run well, then I might still be prepared to call this a redemption. So let's get it down onto the track and let's find out. So there she is down onto the track, the Hornby Hush Hush. And I don't want to take away from the fact that this is a good looking model. And I think that because proportionally this model does seem to capture the prototype quite well. And obviously the prototype was very good looking. So yeah, I, I can't help but say I really like this model despite its faults. However, when it comes to the mechanism, the faults really do seem to recede quite a bit. The big question is the front bogey. On previous Hush Hush models, I felt that the bogey was taking up a bit too much of the loco weight and reducing pulling power. And as you can see, I don't have to lift the bogey very much before the rest of the body sort of goes with it. Um, but as we'll see later on, the pulling power doesn't seem to have been affected. By the way, the first performance test has already been filmed and I will show you that later on. I did not undertake any disassembly until the first performance test was fully filmed. So let's talk about the mechanism then. So this Loco has tender pickups as well as Loco pickups. So you've got seven pickups going to each line. That's absolutely fantastic. The base keeper is very easy to remove. It uses spring-loaded contacts, which is awesome for servicing. Proper turned metal bearings on the driving axles. And just to prove a point, I pulled the axles out of the chassis and moved them about a bit because some people tried to blame the previous failure on the fact that I'd disassembled the Loco and somehow damaged it. Well, I kind of know what I'm doing a bit more than that, I'm afraid. Every single Loco I review undergoes the same treatment and you can't completely brick a locomotive just by removing the base keeper and fiddling around with the bearings, provided you put everything back together correctly, which I obviously did. The centre driving axle is the one that is driven here and that is fine, that makes perfect sense. Here is the chassis, die-cast chassis brings the loco and tender weight up to 466 grams, which seems to be four grams heavier than the first original Hush Hush I looked at, I'm not sure how that happens. Motor, decent sized motor, looks good and hefty, this is the typical Hornby 5 pole motor, normally works a treat, which is good to see. Very hefty flywheel on that as well, and again, that is noticeable in the loco's performance. No extras though on the chassis, obviously no lights of any description, as I've already said. Seems very, very bare bones for such an expensive model. The gauging is quite interesting because the front and back driven axles were gauged at 14.2 millimeters back to back, but the center was gauged at 14.00. Now on the surface, it kind of makes sense that the center wheels would be a bit looser because obviously it's a large loco, but when you consider that the back axles are just dummies, they don't do anything, the actual wheelbase of the Loco is not that crazy. It's basically a 460. But either way, yeah, the mechanism seems to be absolutely fine. And with that, I think we can move on and I will show you the first performance test. Okay, moment of truth. And there's quite a lot riding on the performance of this Loco because let's face it, I haven't really been impressed by any other aspect of the model so far. And if this Loco is going to get any positivity from me at all, then performance is the only remaining category in which it can possibly do so. So, forwards direction, does this loco work? Let's find out. Turning it up. Oh, it does work. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> in fact, I think the last one worked as well, didn't it? But it had issues locking up and such. So, we'll see how that goes on around the layout. I've got to say, though, this seems pretty decent because, hang on, let me back it up. If I cut power in front of the camera, 
you can see that sort of flywheel effect. And that suggests that, yes, the Loco's got a flywheel, but also that the mechanism is nice and free. And if, as soon as you cut power to the motor, the mechanism seized up immediately, then I would suspect that there was something wrong. But uh, no, the fact that this one coasts along a little bit, thanks to the flywheel, is a very good sign. Right, so how is the crawl? Let's try this. I'm just going to ease it up steadily. Now, of course, new loco, obviously, it needs running in before it's necessarily at its best. But I always do this straight out of the box, just for comparative purposes. So I'm still turning it up. There we go. So I think we need a bit more, don't we? There we go. Oh, now it's going a bit quick. Can we go slower than that? So actually, generally speaking, it is quite smooth. Like if I get it at this speed, that is very good. I mean, it's a bit inconsistent at the moment, but at least it's a smooth motion when it goes. Although I think it's stalled now. Let's give it a bit of a hand. So I'm not, I'm not seeing much torque in the mechanism, <laughs> shall we put it that way? Um, but yeah, generally it does seem to be smooth and quiet, and at the high speeds I think it's going to be absolutely fine. Let's do a 50% run by, just have a look at the speed and the gearing. That's 50. Yeah, it seems about right for this sort of locomotive, you know, it's not a slow goods freight loco or whatever. Yeah, I think the speed seems quite sensible. How is the torque out of interest? So I'll just put my fingers on the sprung buffers. 50%. Yeah, so there's some power there. Look at that. Actually, at the high speeds, it's um, barely slowing down at all when I do that. So it actually seems like a good, powerful loco. The low speed performance is good, but not consistent. So hopefully that will be better after running in. I think the next thing to try then is running this around the layout. Yeah, I struggled there, it's definitely stalling a bit. Yeah, we need to run it around the layout, see how it gets on around the curbs, make sure there are no problems with derailment and whatnot. And then of course we'll come back and hook this up to some rolling stock and do some more testing with it. So here we go, 50% speed. So it's definitely good and lively, isn't it? It's going for it, that's for sure. And I didn't see any issues around those curves, which is also great. So, at long last, it looks as though we've found a category in which this replacement Hush Hush is better than the original one, at least by any considerable margin. Yeah, the performance seems to be really good. It's not stalling or slowing down to a crawl or having any issues like that. Um, we've already seen that there's decent torque in the mechanism, which suggests a good healthy motor. Yeah, I feel a lot better about this. I do think there's still some work to do on the slow speed performance, and looking at it now, it does seem to be quite speedy, so perhaps if this was geared to run a little bit slower, then there would be a bit more torque and a bit more control down at the low end. But generally speaking, compared with the performance of my original Hush Hush that I tested, this is quite the breath of fresh air. So I'll leave this to run, I'll see you in just a second. There we go, that is running in complete. And it's been fine, yeah, it's been absolutely fine. I've not noticed it slowing down on curves or on Gordon's Hill. Seems to be a good amount of torque there, at least at the higher speeds. Obviously no cutting out because of all those pickups and everything. And even in reverse and even at the slightly higher speed that is 50 on this loco, no derailments. So that is really good. Is the slow speed performance any better now though? Let's find out. Let's try forwards to begin with. Oh. Let's try again. I'm just easing it up now very gently. Yeah, that's pretty darn good. But can it maintain it now? I'm not touching the controller. Yeah. That's pretty good, isn't it? So the slow speed performance does seem to be better. As I'm saying that, it's stalled. Let's turn it up a bit more. But it does seem to be better after having been run in, which is awesome. So yeah, I mean, not much cogging there. Yeah, it does keep sort of slowing down, so it's it's not the best in the world. But uh, I think given the size and the weight of the Loco, and given the trouble I've had in the past, I'm happy to settle for this, folks. Oh, there we go, it's gone now. Uh, so I, yeah, I literally just touched the dial and it shot off. So yeah, at the low speed, there does seem to be a slight lack of torque. Um, which is going to make you know really precise controlled coupling quite difficult, but 
this is not a slow freight loco like I said earlier so yeah the fact that it's not the best at the slow end is not the end of the world but it would have been better to see slightly better let's go again let's see if I can get it to crawl in reverse I'm just easing up gently starting to go a bit more there we go time oh yeah stalled again so yeah I think it's possibly due to the size of that flywheel that's a very heavy mass to turn at low speed and perhaps that zapping some of the torque from the motor at the low end because at the higher speeds it's very very smooth and controlled so slightly mixed bag on performance generally though I mean the loco works so <laughs> again I'll settle for it Pulling power comes in at 0.54 newtons, which is about 32 coaches on straight and level track. That's very close to the other hush hushes I've measured, so everything seems to be normal there. I've set up some LNER coaches for this loco to couple up to. There's quite a few of them there, seven. So if this can haul them up Gordon's Hill at a sort of 40 speed maybe, without slowing down, then I'm happy to say that the torque, at least at the high speed, is perfectly adequate. So let's go and try it. Let's see if I can be nice and steady. Oh, steady. Yeah, well, that's quite acceptable, I guess, isn't it? Quite realistic, almost. You know, the slight, the slight pause before the final coupling. Yeah, I don't mind that too much at all. Right, how does the characteristic change with a load? Here we go. Let's go for about 40. Right, let's take it steady. Nice, gentle acceleration there. There we go. That looks like a good speed. So elsewhere on the layout, I've got a few other LNER locomotives. There is an odd one out. Uh, I in fact, I think there are several possible answers for the odd one out. But if you can come up with the one that I'm thinking of, I'll pin the first comment to do so. Here, though, we've got the rebuilt Hush Hush from Hornby, which I believe has a similar chassis, in fact. But I did think that this one ran slightly better during its review. Uh, it could just be manufacturing tolerances responsible for that, because pretty sure the two chassis are very close, if not exactly identical. And then on the inside line, I've got another somewhat experimental Gresley design. It's certainly the only loco I can think of that sort of aesthetically looks similar to the Hush Hush. It is, of course, the P2, which Hornby are also developing a new model of. Anyway, new Hush Hush has made it around the track once now, so I think for the next lap we'll film it and we'll watch carefully around those curves and up that gradient to check that performance. Right, keep those eyes peeled for any slowdowns or issues. First curve. Yeah, I'm really not seeing any slowing down there on the curves. Uh, maybe a slight slowdown, but really nothing to sniff at on the slight incline there. And we have got seven coaches. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think there is a slight slowdown there, but it's certainly nothing too bad. So, in conclusion, in some ways this is not the redemption that I hoped it would be, because... It's still a relatively poor quality model at an absurdly high price tag, but at least this one works properly to the point where I'm happy to keep the Loco and I'm not going to return it to get my money back this time. So because I have a working Loco now, in some ways this is the redemption that I hoped it would be because this is now something that I can use and enjoy to an extent. I'm still not entirely convinced that I would recommend the Hornby Hush Hush to you, uh, but it's quite a nuanced issue, really, isn't it? I mean, if it's the only loco you want, you're not interested in other locos, no matter how much better value they can offer or perhaps how much better quality they can offer, then obviously the hush-hush is going to be the way to go because no other loco is going to scratch your hush-hush itch. But on the other hand, if you do just want a decent-looking loco that is good quality and good value for money, then there are many, many locos that I would recommend instead of this. So it just requires careful thought, and then hopefully you'll be able to make the right decision for you. Overall, though, yeah, it's okay. I do like the model. I'm enjoying running it. It's a very welcome addition to the collection. Let's have some ratings then on the original condition Hush Hush from Hornby. And I think with the exception of the quality and the value for money, this is generally a decent enough model, isn't it? 
The level of detail I think I'm going to give four star for because yeah there's quite a lot going on here. It's got a decent cab, sprung buffers, good number of separately fitted parts, good fidelity in the moulded detail etc etc. I do feel though even in the you know half a year or so since this loco has come out that aspects of the model do seem quite outdated. For instance, the lack of screw link couplings, particularly at this new and much higher price, is increasingly unreasonable. Lack of lights, etc., etc. So it doesn't get five star, but generally it's a good detailed loco. The performance I'm going to give four star. Generally, this is a fine performer. It's got decent, if not industry best, low speed performance. At the higher speeds though, it is a very, very good runner. It's smooth and quiet, and this one seems to have much better torque than on the previous two Hush Hushers I looked at. So yeah, I think it's genuinely deserving of a four star. Pulling power is really quite good indeed. 0.54 Newtons or 32 coaches on straight and level track. It can do that with no problems, and certainly at the higher speeds, there are no noticeable torque issues this time, which is good to see. The mechanism gets a four star for me. Yeah, generally it's a really good mechanism. Loads of pickups, proper bearings, decent motor as well, good size to it, nice and hefty. Flywheel on there as well. It's just those rear wheels, they've got to drag the score down somewhere and I'm gonna do it with the mechanism. The quality for me is three star. Aspects of the quality are okay. I mean, there's no bits dropping off it. The quality of the decoration and the finish is absolutely fine, but the plastic work in the running plate leading to that warping, completely unacceptable. Wonky parts, completely unacceptable. Visible glue in several areas, totally and utterly unacceptable, particularly with how expensive this model is now. Which brings us on to value for money. The latest RRP is £241.99, which is more expensive now than the first original Hush Hush I bought. This came from D-Rails at £197.99, which is better, but again, this model is relatively simple. There's not that much complexity there. Could be forgiven if the quality was high, but unfortunately it isn't, so I've given it two star on value. I do think though that the rebuilt Hush Hush was slightly better value at the same price, and that's because there were far fewer quality issues with that model. Overall then, that is 7.04 out of 10. Let's put that into the logbook, and we are 27th place above the Ruston 48 and below the Bankman Daisy. Yeah, it's not bad, it's just not worth the money. Hopefully these don't sell too well at this price, and hopefully the price will come down over time, and then possibly this will be a loco I can recommend. Well folks, that will just about do it for this review. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've got any thoughts on the Hornby Hush Hush, I would definitely love to hear them. So please pop them down in the comments. Have you got one of them? Have you thought about trying one of them? What's your decision for not going for one if you decided that way? And what made you go for it if you decided to get one? Very much would like to hear from you. For now though, I'll say thank you very much for watching and I will see you very soon for another video. All right, cheers folks, take care.